This video is going to cover using the Rails credential system to create some environment variable type logic. Basically, it's going to be stuff like maybe your API keys that you want to keep on your system, uh, but not push up to the uh, GitHub repo. In this case, you'll actually be pushing the info up to your GitHub repo, but you'll keep your encryption key on your local machine. You won't push that up. And what this will allow you to do is you can, of course, uh, push it up and then pull it down on other people's machines. Maybe you're working on a small team. As long as you all have the same main key, you can then access the information uh, in a safe and secure manner, but other people on the internet can't get access to your uh, API keys, for example. So this is actually fairly simple to do, but what I wanna do is actually use a small little demo app that we'll build out real quick, just so that you can see it in action. So all we're gonna do is just create a controller. So we'll say Rails G controller pages home. And we're just gonna display the uh, the keys on the home page so that we can actually see stuff changing. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go to home.html.erb. And in here, all we'll do is we'll just say, uh, let's just do a H2. These are your keys. And then that's all we'll do for now. So let's start by just adding in one key real quick. And the way we can do this is we can come over to our console. I'll full screen this. And you have a couple different options here. Your first is to type editor in all caps equals. And then let's say we want to use the nano editor because it's the simplest to use. And then you just want to do rails credentials colon edit. And I'm actually going to grab this part right here and just copy it because we're going to be using this a couple times. So you can go ahead and hit enter on this and this will just open up your credentials.yaml file inside of Nano. So in here, you already have your secret key base, which we can access from our application. So let's go ahead and let's try to access that. So it's secret key base and I'll exit out of here. So let's come over to our home and maybe you want to display your secret key base on your homepage for some reason. In that case, what you can do is you can type rails application dot credentials dot dig and then your secret underscore key underscore base so do that we'll come over here type rails s to start the server and then go to slash pages slash home which should be our home page you can see here is the secret key for this application. Cool. If this is all you needed to do, you're now done. But okay, maybe you don't want to use Nano. Maybe you want to use Vim instead so that you can go give that Stack Overflow question some more upvotes on how to exit it. In that case, what you can do is you can actually just type editor equals Vim and then right click and paste that in. And we'll run this command. And this will also open up the window, but this time it'll be open in, in Vim. We can come in here and let's create a new one. Let's call this the Vim key is equal to control Q or something. We can now hit escape colon WQ and hit enter to write that and then quit. I'll exit out a full screen and type Rails S again. We'll come over here and we'll do the same thing we just did, but this time we'll give this one the Vim key, save it and refresh. And there you can see the Q is at the end there. Maybe we should put in a BR. So that is our Vim key. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm making these tutorials is keep everything inside of VS Code because not everyone is familiar with Nano or Vim, but people usually have VS Code open. In that case, what you can do is hit Control C to stop the server. You can actually type editor equals, you know, then you're gonna open up some quotes and then code space dash dash wait. And you can type rails credentials colon edit. If we hit enter on this, it'll actually run this in VS code in the last VS code window that you had open. So in this case, it was over here in this VS code uh, instance. So that's why it's opening it over here. So now let's change this to not have a quote and just leave it as Q. And then we'll add it a new one and we'll say this, uh, we'll say this, is VS code. And then we'll just put in the word true. Now, if I hit control S here, you'll just see I saved it. This still won't exit and this won't actually update anything. So if we come over here to the home page, we'll just put in another BR tag and then we'll throw in the rails application credentials dig 
and we'll grab this as VS code. We'll paste this in. We'll come over here, refresh. Of course, the server is not running, so this isn't gonna work. The reason this doesn't work is because just like with Vim or with Nano, where you have to exit before it saves anything, here you also have to exit this window to get this to save. So if we just click this X, uh, you'll see right here for some reason it says file encrypted and saved. So we can hit control L to clear that, run a Rails S, and then hopefully it will show that this is VS Code. So there it is. Let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, so at this point, you could pretty much edit this however you need to, regardless of your operating system because of VS Code. Uh, I think you can open it with Notepad on Windows. You get the idea, you just grab whatever application you need to, to edit it, and then you just open it with that. One thing that you'll run into sometimes is you'll have uh, keys that you use in development and keys that you use in production. So there is actually a trick for that. What you can do is uh, open up your credentials file again. So I'll just go ahead and run that. We'll come in here and we'll do a development. Enter down, tab over, and give this a demo key of one, two, three, four, five. You can then do a production key if you would like to. I'm, I'm gonna put this in, but I'm not gonna use it. But we can do a, a demo key, five, four, three, two, one. And then we'll close out of this so that it saves the file. So now we can come down here. And if you want to dig into a multi-layer key like this, you can do dot dig and then your uh, environment. So here we had development, comma, demo, underscore key, put the colon there, save that. Let's run a Rails S and then we'll, we'll talk about this in a second. So this puts the one, two, three, four, five right there. But one of the things you can do is you can actually, instead of having development or production here and having like a switch case up top, you can just do rails.env.toSymbol Control S on that, and it'll do the same thing. So if I come out of here and I try to do something like Rails underscore ENV equals production Rails S, that should start the server in production, and we should expect to see this switch to 54321. Okay, we actually have to do a Rails assets colon precompile, and now let's do a Rails S again in production. We'll come over here and we'll refresh. There we go. So now we have the 54321 appearing. So this is sort of the best way to handle the uh, credentials in terms of how your environment works and just ensuring that you're always in the right environment for your keys, at least as far as I'm aware. Again, I don't use Rails professionally. This just seems to be the best solution that I could find. So the last thing I want to talk about, because this is pretty much all you need for your actual credentials, is what happens if your key is corrupted or if you're just unable to access it. So here we have the credentials.yaml.enc, just a whole bunch of nonsense. And down here we have the master.key. So let's say we grab the master key and we add a, I don't know, like a bracket at the end of it. We'll save this, we'll come over here, we'll refresh the page, nothing changes. Now let me type a Rails S and you can see here, you have a rescue in decrypt, so you can't access the credentials file. So you have a message encryptor invalid message. So in this case, unfortunately, your only choices are to get your master key back. So let's say you clone this repo at work and you're trying to access it. You have to get the master key from someone, or if you know how to get the API keys that you need, you can then just delete the credentials, YAML encoding and the master key, and then run your uh, editor equals code dash dash wait command to open up a new one. And here you can see that it tells you uh, adding config master key to store encryption key, blah, blah, blah. Save this in a password manager. If you lose the key, no one, including you, can access anything encrypted inside of it. So then it opens up a fresh credentials file with a new secret key base and none of your other stuff in it. So now you would have to add in your Vim key, this is VS Code, and then your development and your production keys again. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial.